All right. Seems like uh, I've been invaded by boats. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to deal with that. I have deactivated the notification for now. Good morning. Good afternoon, actually. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland. <laughs> I can't even talk. Um, and uh, we are going to do... Well, I'm going to deactivate something first. There it is, the monitoring from the audio. Um, yes, yeah, so in this stream, I'm going to write some Flutter code. So if you have followed uh, my previous streams, uh, you may have seen that I've struggled installing the SDK for Android uh, and all, all those uh, wonderful things. Uh, but I got it in the end, and so now I'm going to try and write some code. I do have an idea for uh, an app uh, that I, I want to to write. Uh, so the idea is that um, I want to have an app, and I'm pretty sure it already exists, but I want to write that an app that is uh, that will help me share expenses with another person. So we, it's going to be really simple. I'm not going to do multi-tenant application, multi-group stuff like that. Just two participants and expenses being shared. So either, you know, um, you pay for the other party because, I don't know, you're at the grocery store, store and they ask you to buy something for them. So you buy that and then they, they owe you money. You, you've made an expense for them or, you know, they do a service for you and then you owe them money or maybe you bought i don't know two tickets for the the cinema and then you want to share that expense so that's that's the kind of thing i want to i want to write i have uh looked at the documentation i have a clearer uh, idea of how flutter works but um yeah it's not uh, it's not yet um very clear in my head so i thought you know why not go on stream and do some actual coding so let's uh, let's do that move to the scene with phone and my lovely daughter here uh, and uh, we're going to create a project so i have a terminal here in visual studio code and we're going to do flutter create um so i want to do uh, Linux. Um, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll start with Linux, but then we can change the device anyway. So, um, so I don't know how to call this uh, this app. So we're going to call it uh, uh, ex expense without any um, uh, common letters. So let's let's call it like expense like that. Um, Expense, expense for, yeah, expense for two, because it's certainly for two participants. So let's call that expense for two. Let's create this project, expense for two. Let's go to expense for two project, and we're going to open that in. Oh, it, it's not working. I thought it was gonna open in this um, in this instance. So let's open this folder. Where have I put that in? slash opt I think in opt flutter projects flutter projects and expense for two and open that yes I trust the the people who made this thing uh don't show that again we're not doing anything right now with CMake um I do have one visual studio code. okay so that's the default app and what we can do right away is change the device so we go to Control shift p to open this uh, command palette and we're going to choose flutter select device and i'm going to enable android for this project uh yes please run flutter create platform android for me which is uh, something i should have done probably uh, from the command line but i didn't remember how to do that and so now i have this and Let's select the device once again. So Nokia 7 Plus, that's the, the phone that is plugged in my computer right now. And I'm using 
um, I'm, I'm, I have a HDMI device plugged into my PC and I plugged a Chromecast in the device and I'm sending the, and I'm showing this, <laughs> I'm pointing at my phone, but you can see that. I'm sending the, the screen of the phone to the Chromecast using the Google Home app and that's what I'm getting back in OBS. So that's uh, that's this part here where you can see it with the mouse because the mouse is behind this um, scene in OBS. But right, so we can see here that we have selected the Nokia 7 Plus. So now we press F5, and it's going to. Yeah, I don't I don't care that you can't run Snap Bean Go on. I don't think I do care. Do I? I don't think I care, but what's going on? It did work when I rehearsed it, of course. Oh, Flutter Projects wanted to start Snap Bingo and... Okay. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. No, <laughs> I'm saying, oh, like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. Uh, Flutter, select device. What's... Uh What's the Linux Linux version do? Not a lot. So let's go back to debug and run Flutter dot on Flutter. It's building a Linux application. Okay, that's not what I want. But if that works, then we can start again. I did that about half an hour ago, and it worked. So I did something different. Okay, so the app works for Linux. So let's change and select the Nokia 7 plus phone and then start. Loaded. And now it's working. Right. Great. I have no idea what uh, what went wrong. <laughs> oh, maybe I know. Maybe I, I didn't have the main dot dot file opened and it didn't know how to run that. But let's see. So it's building. It's going to take a, a few minutes to build the Flutter app for the phone. And while it do, it's doing this, um, so the, the good thing about Flutter is the, the really the hot, hot reload uh, thing. Uh, because once it's spent a few minutes building that, then it's really fast to... Uh, develop with Flutter. So let's go back to the scene here, and you should be able. You should have been able to see that, but you are not. Why? Something. Something didn't work. Am I still casting my phone? Maybe not. So if I stop sharing my screen, it seems like. my screen sharing is not working anymore. How come? Okay, let me do some magic. Yes, my screen was not working anymore. I probably should not prepare those things because uh, when I do that, everything goes wrong afterwards. All right, let's try again. Reload the phone. Hot restart complete. No, it didn't work. Right, stop and run again. Main dot dot and press F five and that will start the the completion. It's running gradle again. And there we go. We have we're gonna have in a few moments the default app. There it is. Okay, it's time to change that. Oh, my uh, USB-C connector is uh, it's not uh, behaving. All right, let's change that, okay? We don't need a widget inspector. Okay, so the first thing I want when we arrive on this screen is um, a list of the current expenses. I'm going to put the phone on the other side of uh, this desk. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit better for me to manage. Oh, don't, 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 don't do that. Yes. Thank you, phone. I want to have a list of expenses. So what do we have here? 
we have a main, which is the that file here. We have a main, and we have an app, and we have an um, a home page, uh, an, a home page state. Okay, um, refer to my previous stream if you uh, want to know more about the, those default things. But I'm going to start by doing some refactoring. I'm going to create a new file that I'm going to call home screen dot dot okay uh, and now in this home screen do i get do i keep the app in there yes i'm going to keep the app in there i'm going just going to move everything that's related to home in there and okay we need to import oops we need to import stateful widgets so i'm going to press control space and you can see here it's going to uh, uh, um, offer me to auto import that so yes I want that do we have any more errors no that's all we needed and um, so that's the line that was just automatically added and now I need to do the same control space here and auto import my home page which I want to rename so I'm going to home screen dot dot and my home page is now called home screen and it it renamed the the class here and also the state that uh, goes with this. This is a stateful widget, which means which means we can change stuff inside. And each time we change stuff, it's going to um, rebuild the um, the widgets. Uh, the way that that works is when you call this function set state this will call build and it will rebuild the whole widget tree but it seems like it's going to be a lot of work each time you change the, um, something in a window but the process according to the documentation the process has been optimized and the the re refresh is really fast i'm going to get rid of those all those comments in a moment because we don't need we don't really need that okay uh, so we've got that, we've got our title, we need to change the title. The title is now going to be Expense42, because, well, that's what we called our app. Now I want to center that, but I don't remember how we do that. Uh, it's probably not there. Oh, no, that's here. I think that's here, that's what we want. We want to change the title here. Uh, because uh, the app is not, the, this thing on top of the screen here is not the app name, it's the title name. So let's call that expense for 2 and it should, uh... oh, I've stopped the debugger, okay. Now let's run the debugger again and we should have our new title showing up. Hopefully. Once it's build it's done building. Which is why the hot hot reload is really interesting because you don't have to wait for 30, 40 seconds each time. So it's installing the app. And here's the app. And well we still don't need this widget inspector. And yes, it's called XPNS42. Okay. And if we go to the home screen, I believe there is a place in the scaffold here in the app bar where we can say center title true. And then we press Ctrl S and instantly the title has been centered. Right. I don't want a... I, will, I don't want that in the body of my widget. I want a list. So from what I've, <laughs> I've learned we need to have a list view builder, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to remove that. Oh, one cool feature of this uh, Dart, I think it's Dart, it's not Flutter, it's Dart, um, extension to VS Code, is that it automatically adds a comment here, which is not even a comment. You, you can't even select it. It's not, in, it's not real. It's just an illusion. <laughs> but it's great because it shows you that this closing Parenthesis, parenthesis correspond to this text and here I have this center tag 
which is the, the thing that centers everything on the screen, both horizontally and vertically. And the closing parenthesis, parenthesis for that is done there. So I, I have two helpers for that. I have the um, extension that colorizes the parenthesis. So that's why it's yellow there. And you can see this yellow line here and that goes down to here. But I also have this slash slash center, which has been added by the um, dot extension, which tells me that it corresponds to this um, tag here. So I don't even have to have the, the thing selected. I know that I can get from here to here and I'm going to get rid of everything. Neat. So I want a list view builder. Or oh, so I heard. <laughs> uh, oh, also, neat thing, when you press Ctrl S, it formats the code. So if I do that, uh, it should, well, it should, uh, there's, an, uh, there's an error. So that's why it doesn't do that. So let's create a fake, well, an empty, uh, an empty item builder. We need a, a comma here. And if I press Ctrl S, then it formatted everything, but it's not happy because it says that we need a two parameters to our function. We need the context, which is something that is still very um, strange to me. I, I think it's just some something you pass to every function and don't really have to care about um, what's in there. Um, and then an index, which is going to be given uh, to us by the list view builder and it will tell us build item number whatever. And this is to prevent building a 500 uh, item long list if you can only display a few of them. So my guess is I haven't really checked that, but I think that's what I, under what I understood, that it's going to be uh, lazy loaded uh, and it will ask you only for um, the item that is visible. Okay, right. What uh, what's going on? It says that the body complete normally causing null to be written, but the return type is a potentially non nullable uh, type. Yes. Uh, let's see. It's a widget. We need to return a widget. So let's uh, let's for now let's do just a text. It says hello. Okay. And it's not happy because it's a function so it should return text all right and look at that it does says lots of hellos and it scrolls infinitely and that great now i know that a list view builder in order to optimize its uh its thing need to know how many items there are to display so let's limit that to five and reload our app, and now we see we have a five hello. Okay, those hellos don't look mm, particularly good. They look, well, meh. <laughs> so what do we want? I think I remember that we want a card. A card and once uh, one, one, another awesome thing. An awesome feature of uh, the Flutter and Dart extension to VS Code is this. I type card because I remembered it was card and it will give me the description from the documentation and also how it would look like. So I, sometimes you need to scroll to see, you know, uh, the whole thing, but that's really useful because now I know that this is what I want and it gives me um, all the properties and a sample of code and uh, this is this is great this is th this comes from the uh, the official documentation I think so I want a card yes that's what I want uh, but that's one of those not so great features of the extension is that each time you uh, open a parenthesis it will by default give you the first property which is not necessarily what I want uh, I want the child of this, and the child of this will be the text, and there we go. Let's save that and see how it does. It's much better. It is much better. I think. I don't know what you think, but I think it's much better. 
I'm going to do something just so I can see that a little bit more. I'm going, yeah. Yeah, looks fine on my <clears throat> on, on stream, apparently. All right. Um, what should I do now? Uh, yes. So I want to align that properly. I want to have multiple information. Well, I, I want to have, because it's an expense, I want to know what it is about. I want to know who did the expense and how much it costs. And because over here in Switzerland, France is not that far. I often have expenses in Swiss francs and in euros. So I'm going to need to show the um, currency. And so to do that, there is something that is called a list style, is it? I think, yes, that's the list style. And I want this third, the uh, second one, I think, yes, I want the one with the, the dots because I want to be able to have a an action on that. Oh, that's maybe it's not this this one. I, I I don't know yet. I haven't dug that deep into the um, list item. But what I know is that I want a list tile. So let's do this. Uh, so child is gonna, it's gonna be a list. Oh come on, list tile. Okay. Oh. And what was the proper other property do I have? Uh, I have a leading, which is going to be the first part. I have a title and a subtitle. Okay. So, title. Let's say milk. Okay. Uh, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. But what? The argument type string? Oh, it's a text. So it's a text widget. And that's going to be milk. And there we go. We've got some milk. We actually have five milks because of this. Uh, what else? We have we need a subtitle, and I want to make uh, put the name of the person who did the expense. So let's say it's me. Good, good. This is yeah. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted, and now I want something um, at the end of this line, which is. So we, I thought, I think we saw leading. Uh, yes, leading is there. So we probably have something trailing a widget to display after the title, typically an icon widget. Typically, but not in this case, because in this case, I want to say this. Okay. Right. That looks like this is something I want I okay um, I want the title to be uh, bold and I believe text has some properties for that text with do we have uh, text here text style if not null the style to be used for this text is this uh, is it that? What does that requires? A text style. Let's see what's in text style. Uh, yes, seems like uh, that's what I want. Do we have some stuff to make the style bold? 18 area. Don't wait. Sounds like CSS. Oh, yeah, EG bold. Typeface thickness. That uh, sounds like CSS uh, stuff. So, font weight, what is it? It is a font weight class. 
Oh, I've seen some interesting stuff. Yeah, bold. Right, let's save that and see what... Oh, it does work. Perfect, perfect. Uh, let's do the same with the... The, 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 the amount. Uh, I want that to be uh, style. It's a text style. And I want this to be font weight. And I want that to be font weight dot bold. Yes. Also, now that I think about it, I would like my app to be green. Because, you know, green forever. Okay. So which one looks like the actual Ubuntu green? Uh, yeah, by the way, another awesome feature of Dart or Flutter. It's that. You don't have to wonder what your color will look like. You can see that right on the screen. So what if I do that? Is it is that working? Uh, no, because it's not a color. It wants a swatch. So a complete set of green. So let's make our app green. There we go. It's almost Ubuntu Mate green. I love it. I'm going to have to dig into the, the making of... Uh, colors and see if I can have a Ubuntu Mate green for that. So that's great, but I can hear you in my head. Yes, I'm like that. Hey, Big Pod. How are you? Oh, sorry, Big Pod Boat. Let, let, let me bring the chat so people can see. Yes. So there's a, there was plenty of boats, of boats earlier. Uh, I disable the notification i'm gonna have to deal with that but you know i'm happy i've been raided by boats boat raided yeehaw means i'm famous oh maybe not <laughs> so this is big pot boat hey big pot boat how are you doing we are coding a flutter app that is going to help me share expenses with another person so it's only a two-person thing it's not going to be fancy like, you know, with uh, 27 people when you go on vacation with your, you know, the whole family and then you can st share an expense uh, using like, it's only a third for you and tenth for you. And uh, But, uh, you know, I don't want to pay for alcohol because I don't drink or I never eat meat, so don't charge me for meat and stuff like that. No, it's going to be very simple. Two, two participants and uh, shared expenses either 100% for the opposite party or 50-50 so that that's that's the uh the 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 only thing that I'm going to do and so if i switch back to the android scene you can see the uh the app so that's the main screen and we are displaying expenses but as i said i can hear you in my head now telling me but you just Hard coded milk for 1.2 Swiss franc, and you have five of that. How useful is is that? Well, you would be right. It is not useful. So we are going to create some uh, code for for that to help us. So I talked earlier in a previous stream about stateful and stateful widgets and their state. So the stateful widget is what what is going to be displayed uh, and it's actually it's actually not doing a lot the state is doing the the everything when the state changes when we call set state with um, whatever we want to change inside the state then the framework we call build and it will actually destroy uh, what needs to be destroyed and replace every widget with 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 that so if we want to have a list, then we're going to have to create the list in this uh, class. And then we're going to have to have a way to add some elements to this list. But right now we're going to uh, hard code the content of the list, but we need to create said list. All right, so what do we have here? We have expenses, okay? Um, and so right now we're displaying a subject let's call that subject uh we're gonna 
need to have a participant and we're going to have to have a an, an amount which is going to be a bit tricky in the future because of the, the Swiss francs and the euros. Uh, and at, in the end, when when we do the balance, we need to convert everything that is not Swiss francs to Swiss francs. So we're going to have to use a, a web service to get the, um, the conversion rate. But let's not focus about that right now. We're just going to have an amount, uh, a subject, and a participant. So we're going to create a class. We're going back to our Visual Studio here and we are going to create a class here. I'm going to select any of those or the lib directory, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to click here, new file. Well, it says nouveau fichier on mine because of course it's French. Uh, and we're going to create an expense.dart uh, file in which we're going to create an expense class. Hopefully it's uh, spelled right but uh, luckily that doesn't care so <laughs> that's great all right um so we need a three we need three properties we need a string uh subject we need a string for the participant now this is going to change in time because i'm probably gonna i'm probably gonna have a class and allow for configuration if I want to publish this app, I just can't have me and them as the participants. Although, me and them would work for everyone. I also need a an amount uh, for that. And for the sake of the future, I'm going to have a string currency. Right, so now it's not very happy. There's uh, lots of squiggly lines because non nullable instance field currency must be initialized. Yes, but I don't want to initialize that. I'm going to initialize that in a constructor. So, like in lots of languages, the constructor for a class is actually named um, the same as the class. So, that's, uh, that's easy for us. Now, there's a very fancy notation in uh, Dart to create a constructor that will initialize um, class properties, right? So the way you do that is um, let me let me think. Uh, required. I think it's required subject. Subject. If I do that, is it happy? No, it's not. No, it's not. So. It's um, curly braces for positional parameters, and then subject this dot subject yes this dot participant this dot amount and I made a mistake I made a typo typo ah whatever tomato tomato uh, subject can. Uh, no, but the implicit value is null. Try adding either an explicit non null default or the required. So that's the thing I wanted. So required this dot subject, and then I'm going to do the same here, and then the same here, and then the same here. And now I'm going to F2, press F2 on this and correct that. Right. So now what we've done here is that we we told this class that it has required um, parameters and because they are named this dot something dot will automatically initialize those parameters we don't have to write any code we don't even have to uh, write the curly braces and actually if i put the curly braces in there it's going to kind of complain it's working but it says yeah you know it's empty so use a semicolon instead of writing that so that's what we're gonna do and BigPod says, hello, both me and both are fine. Cool, cool. Excellent. And my earbuds are falling from my ear. I need to change that. Okay, uh, let's go back to the home screen. We now we can now build a list of expenses. Right, and those are going to be the expenses. And we are going to initialize this list. Okay, it doesn't know what expense is. 
but if we control space here, then it will um, I propose to auto import that. So yes, yes, please do that. It's been added here. Uh, here it complains that this is not used, and it's true because I'm not using this anymore. Uh, let's go back to our list. Where is our list? Okay, this is our list of expenses. We're going to initialize a list. So how do we do that? Then we just do expense and then it um, automatically filled the positional arguments for us with placeholders, of course, but we're going to change that. So the first one is going to be milk and you can see here, and it does. I think it does that. Big, uh, Big Pep can tell me. I think um, VS Visual Studio does that too with uh, C Sharp, where you can just tab and move to the next uh, placeholder. You can see those are still. Um, I don't know if you see that clearly on the stream, but they are still highlighted some somehow, and that means that if I, if I press tab, I'm going to move from one to the other, and that's because it uh, automatically filled that for me and now it's uh, it's trying to simplify my life and I'm very grateful for that so the first participant will be well let's say me okay uh, amount is going to be 1.20 and the currency is going to be THF right and notice that we don't need to put the new keyword here we can but we don't have to it's kind of like python so let's have something else what goes with milk well cookies of course and they bought that uh, and that costed uh, I don't know 240 I don't care let's put some euros in there just for the sake of uh, you know uh, diversity <laughs> all right let's put another expense in there what can we get with milk and cookies um, I don't know what do we get some tea yeah okay let's get some tea lemon tea all right um I bought that for well, I don't know, 10 Swiss francs. Uh, what else? Another one, just for for fun. Uh, let's have some, some Marmite in there. <laughs> I most certainly didn't buy that. Uh, and it must be very expensive. So let's go with 123.45 euros. Whatever. Okay, so now we can change the way we build this list, right? Because we no longer have five items. We have four in this list. But we're not going to hard code that. We're going to do expenses dot length. Thank you. I don't know if that's the dot um, extension or the GitHub uh, AI, but it's exactly what I wanted. Okay. Now, in our item builder, we do receive the index, okay? And that index will be one, two, three, four, one, well, one, two, three, or four, um, depending, because we, we gave four to, for the item count. But we do have this list, so we know if it's uh, item zero, that's going to be milk, item one is going to be cookie, and so on. So let's, uh, let's see. The title now is not that, it's going to be expenses and we're going to take the item at the index position and we need the subject. Okay, um, same for the subtitle, we're going to get the expenses of index and we're going to use the participant. For this last thing, we're going to try and use something I've seen this morning, which is uh, dollar sign and um, curly brackets and uh, expenses uh, of index dot amount, and that's going to be dollar sign curly braces expenses of index dot currency. Close curly braces brace yeah brace singular whatever and let's save that and see if it does something it does not why doesn't oh because okay i changed so that's what i was uh saying earlier i think uh, if i, I think it's if i understood correctly the hot reload only 
reloaded this body part, but it didn't see the change in in the thing here. Or oh, maybe it's just because there's a an error. Missing concrete implementation of build. Oh, so I made a mistake in it. Oh, what's that currency doing here? I don't want you here. Uh, the declaration build isn't referenced. Try removing the declaration of build. What? What? I missed something. Oh. Hmm. That's text. That's the list tile. The list tile card. Yes. So what? Uh, so what? Uh, so what? Is this this thing? It doesn't it doesn't like. <clears throat> No. Okay, let's control Z out of this a few times just to go back to some state where everything was working. Okay, so this works. So what did I break in in the No, come on. Okay, only four of those. Okay, I don't know what I broke earlier, but I did break something. So the subtitle is going to be a text of uh, participant. Yeah, still working. And so this is going to be a text of comma expenses dot index dot amount. Yeah, seems to be working fine, so I don't know what uh, that happened. Index.currency. Good, 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 good. Except, except the last one. Why is the last one not like the others? Because because <laughs> because <laughs> reasons and so i changed this part and you can see that it didn't reload automatically so what if i press hot reload it does it doesn't fix anything so i'm going to restart the app and that should fix it there we go it's been fixed awesome i would like to format my numbers as currency and that is something i don't know how to do so we're going to learn together uh, let's go to this screen here and let's uh, op open a new tab and go to dot format amount yes thank you predictive search uh, and six answers and none of them are accepted but this one has 83 ups, so number format. Okay, from ENT package until I wanted to find a solution and found that it is now implemented as per following example. Okay. Perhaps PKML, we need to have something. This works great, even better than the also available number format currency pattern formatter. Okay, that's that looks uh, more promising. So we need something. We need a package. Okay, is it enough to import that, or do I have to do some kind of trickery? I think I need to do some trickery. Oh, it does the trickery for me. And it's blue. Why? Because it's not used. Yes. But it did the trickery for me. That is awesome. I love the Dart and Flutter extensions. Every language server should be like that. Um, 
I think it, it even surpasses what Visual Studio can do. You know, the, the big brother Visual Studio. Okay, so I need that. Let's go to our... Where, where do we go? Where do we go? Here. Somewhere here. In the state, I probably want a final format currency. New number format, simple currency. Do I need a new? I don't think I need a new. And now if I go here that's the amount and i want to format that what did the internet says internet says that i just need to call format currency dot format and my number so let's do that here format currency dot format expenses of index dot amount let's see oh it includes the currency symbol. So I should probably... Ah. Huh. No, that's not what I want. That's not really what I want because I want to have... I want this currency symbol to change from one expense to the other. Uh, where is it? It's there. <laughs> Simple currency. It does take a local and a name and decimal digit. So let's see if we do fr underscore ch here. No. No. Why? String. Oh. Local fr ch. Well, that does. What does that do to our thing? Nothing because it won't hot reload that. I need to. Force it. Yes. Yes. That works. That would work. Oh, but if I have the currency, then I can have two formatters and. Yeah. So FR, FR should be the, the one with the euro. Let's hot rid of that. And wait for. It does, but it it writes the the symbol. Uh, do I want that? Is it what I want? I guess. I guess it's the official symbol. So, big part. What's the um, what's the local for your country? I uh, I I don't uh, I don't you know besides EN US EN UK and. Um, FR4 plus CH, that's uh, pretty much all the, the ones I I know, so we wanted to try with uh, some other stuff. We could uh, we could use your yours. Come on. FR well yeah, FR UK, yes, like like that's gonna work anytime soon. Let's uh Okay, so ENUK apparently doesn't exist because it's probably ENGB, is it? ENUK did the um, dollar thing. English should be, yes, pounds, okay. Right, so, so, let's modify our expense dart and change this currency to be a, a what? And a number format. All right, let's change this. Instead of being a string, it's going to be a number format. Okay, we go back there. We need to have a Swiss franc uh, format format formatter. I don't know. That's going to be F R C H. And we're going to have a euro. Euro. I'm going to put an S in there. And that's going to be FR, FR, FR. And now, well, actually, this is going to be CHF. And this is going to be EUR. Because I'm lazy and I don't want to type lots of stuff. So currency is CH, CHF. Currency is EUR, EUR, 
And this is CHF. And this is EUR. Uh, it doesn't seem to like that because instance member of CHF can't be assigned in an initializer. Try replacing the reference to the instance member with a different expression. Okay. Uh, right. Um, what? 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 Why? What? Uh, implicit this reference in initializer. Okay, let's see how we can fix that. Let's call our let's call our good friend Google. Implicit this reference in initializer. Only static members. Ah, static. Yes. Yes, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, let's say that it is, this is static. And this is static. And now it uh, doesn't like that either. I uh, need to close that. I don't need that. Uh, variable must be declared using the keyword const final var or type name. Okay, so static final that, static final that, and everyone is happy now. Okay, except, except this is not going to work because we don't need this anymore and our, our currency now is now the formatter. So we could use this dot currency dot format and we're going to format our expenses dot of index dot amount let's see uh oh uh oh it doesn't like that type string is not a subtype of number format of function result see also hmm. Whoa, 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 oh, because uh, no, no, because maybe we need to reload this because we've made some pretty big changes. Let's see, application restarted and it worked. Milk bought by me 1.20 Swiss francs, cookies bought by them 2.40 euros, and lemon tea bought by me 10 francs. Marmite bought by them 123.45 euros. It is working. Okay. That's nice. Let's uh let's have a look at something. What what if I now put a bunch of those and it's not working because I forgot the good practices of Dart. Dart the the, the best practices of Dart says put a comma at the end of the last line because if you ever want to add some stuff then you already have the comma in there and how true can they be? I mean, this is something that bites me every single time. Okay, we need to hot reload this, um, well, hot restart this app because we've done some changes and now we've got, yes, moving lists. All right, okay. And I wanted to check something. So let's go to the item builder here. And let's print uh, creating card number and dollar sign comma index. Okay. Semicolon. And it doesn't like that. Avoid using braces in interpolation when not needed. What? Why are they not needed? Is the law index working? Uh, hmm, the law index might be working actually. Creating card. Oh, so I was wrong. Was I? No, I was not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it did build 12 cards. And if I go up. Yeah! Look at that. I move the the list up and now it creates the the item. Oh, it recreates them. 
Oh, so they're probably um, dumped. Oh, yes. Does that change the the state? It is possible. Let's see if it's called build. So build is the function that builds the the widget tree, and it's called every time the state change. All right. Let's uh, let's have a chat with Big Pod. I don't like the fact that some people add comma at the end. Yeah. Uh, it's it. I'm not going to go there. It's a it's kind of a you know. Uh, uh, fight. It's like VMVS Nano. It's uh, it's a personal preference. Um, Flutter says that you can do it and you should do it. That's uh, on the best practice. They don't tell you you have to do it. The language allows for allows for it, and you could do it. Yes, I think you you are right. They are dumped, so they don't use memory. I just wanted to see if scrolling was actually changing the whole tree. So let's print building here and let's try again. So it said reloaded. Yeah, no, let's do. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't say I need to hot reload that and put the, the phone back on the screen. All right, it says building. And now if I go up, no. So, so that's the only the the list that is rebuilt every time it's um, it's scrolled, and not the whole thing here. The whole thing here would be called if, yeah. Well, actually, let's let's try that. Let's try that. We have here a function. That's the floating action button. That's the button at the uh, the, uh, the 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 plus button that is uh, down there at the bottom of the screen. And right now, it calls increment counter. So we're going to remove that because I don't want to use increment counter. And so that means we're going to get rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, also, we're going to get rid of most of our expenses. Right, so we're going to keep that. And now we are going to do something really crazy. We're going to add some, some expense. So we need to do this in our uh, unpressed on our button, right? We need to do this expenses that add, and we need a new expense. So that's going to be test, or maybe we can buy a drone. Let's buy a drone. Uh, I can definitely buy a drone for the uh, crazy amount of that Swiss francs. Uh, yes, okay, I need to do Oh, I love that. I just pressed uh, the uh, semicolon and it's formatted the code for me. Okay, but if I do that, as we can see, nothing is going to happen because we changed the model. So we need to reload that first. And now that we have the model, if I press plus, nothing is happening. Because even though it, it is happening, appending expenses to the list, we didn't tell Dart or Flutter actually that we changed the the state. That's what this set state function does. So we're going to call that wrap our uh, our code here into this, and we need a we need a parenthesis uh i think i've messed something up i think we need a so this one is this one the blue one is the set state i need a a curly brace here and i need another parenthesis here do i no i don't I... so the oh okay so that's that i don't need to have that twice so on pressed on pressed i'm going to set the state i think it's gonna work like this gosh i can't even read 
So I call set state and I have a function in there and it does its stuff. So set state. Is it this then? And then set, set state is there and then there and then that and then that and we are good. Oh, look at that. We <laughs> already have a bunch of drones in there. So let's uh, hot reload the application so we don't have drones. And now I press the plus button on my phone. And here we have the drone and you can see in the the terminal that it did call building. So it did rebuild the whole thing. And I press that again. And again, we have another drone. That is working <clears throat> as I expected it to work. Except that I would like to have a form to actually type, <clears throat> sorry, to actually type stuff in there. Um, well, let's do that. You know, why not? We're not going to stop there. So instead of adding an expense in here, I'm going to comment that out because I want to keep it. Thank you, ACDHIR uh, for following. I don't know if you're a human or not, but I don't really care. Oh, you're a human. Thank you for the follow. You are French. Bienvenue. J'ai pas trop de de followers français uh, ou suisse d'ailleurs ou belge ou luxembourgeois. Welcome to the stream. I'm going to keep speaking English because of you know international audience and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, don't hesitate to ask your questions in French if you have something, if there's something that you don't understand. All right, north of France. Wow. Uh, I've studied in Lille. I've made, I went to engineering school in Lille. Um, so what we're doing, let's uh, recap uh, for a few moments. I'm doing a, I'm going to write an app that is going to help me share expenses between two participants. So me and them right now. Uh, probably I'm going to add some config uh, screen to replace me and them by um, names, actual names. Uh, so it's not going to be fancy like you can, you know, you could use when you go to, you know, you go on vacation with like 27 people and then you can share your your expenses between just a, uh, a small number of people. It's just going to be very simple. Me and them, I buy something for them, I buy something for both of us. That's pretty much it. Or they buy something for them, for, for me or for both of us. So really simple um, because that's my use case. That's what I need. Um, maybe you're, you're, do, you're, give, you're, you know, you're doing a service, you're doing something for someone and they then they owe you money, but then you gonna ask them to buy something at the grocery store for you and you're gonna owe them money so you don't want you maybe don't want to exchange uh, money every single day so you can do some thanks and uh, no i do not know Alman, but um i it's been a while so maybe i've been there but um, i don't i don't really remember now but in any case it's uh it's great to have you uh, as a, of a follower, thank you very much. So we were trying to add a form so that when we press on this plus button, it shows something. The way to do that, I've been told by the documentation and some tutorials on the internet, is to add routes or route, route, route. I think it's routes in in American English. Um, and that is done here. Is it done here or is it done in the material app? Uh, no, it's done here in the... Well, yes, that's the material app, not not the uh, scaffold. So we're going to add some roots. Roots are... It's kind of... If you know um, the Slim frame, framework in PHP, it's kind of the same. Um, you define routes and then you define stuff that 
this route does. Or in Angular, you can define routes too, and you specify a controller that is going to be loaded when this route is uh, hitted. So, is it my first time with Flutter and Dart? It is my first real time with Flutter and Dart. <clears throat> Sorry. I um, have two videos on YouTube that has been archived where you can see me fight for an hour or something with the SDK, the Android SDK. Try to install that. Uh, it's been a real pain in the backside, but it's done now. And so it's the first time I'm doing a live stream where I actually do some uh, some code. So uh, yes, and if you know anything about Flirt and Flutter and Dart, and you realize that I'm doing something wrong, let me know, please, please let me know, because uh, I I would I would uh, you know gladly learn some stuff. Hello, Arigi. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Um, uh, routes, yes, routes. So it's a map, and we need to map a few things. First of all, we need to map the main route. So it's going to be, it's going to be slash. Um, those routes are like URLs inside your app, which is, uh, which is funny because lots of stuff in, in Flutter looks like they are, they come from the web. Lots of styles are CSS like, and the routes, <coughs> the routes are like URL likes, uh, like, and so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, it's been thought of like some web framework, and the funny thing is that you can actually generate this exact same app from for the phones, uh, iPhone and Android, for the desktop and for the web. So let's do let's, let's do this. So um, the routes they they take a string. Uh, as a path and then a widget function, which takes the context. So um, let's do that, and this one will return return our home screen, and it's going to need the title and XPN is forty two. So if you were not there at the beginning of the stream, it's just a fancy way to write expense for two because well the app manages expenses for two people yeah i know it's uh it's maybe a bit lame but yeah you know it's it's fun <laughs> uh oops i just lost an earbud <laughs> uh, the, the, the second one great this is going great this is really a great stream uh, thank you for staying, <laughs> whoever came. I actually don't need those while I stream. Uh, I know the music is okay, so. Right, let's do um, <laughs> let's do something. Uh, how we are we going to call the next route? Uh, let's call that edit, right? Nice, a cool name, yeah. <laughs> a cool name, expense for two, yeah. Oh, um, while I think about that, um, Aregi, I've seen your um, ticket on the OBS Studio Snap about OBS Studio not being able to fetch um, HTTPS URL in in, the, and yeah, I've come to that. Um, I know where it fails. I just don't have a solution just yet, but uh, working on that. I know it's been. A long time since you posted this uh, ticket, but I'm going to try and fix that for you and for everybody else. But yeah, so back to Flutter. We are going to add this uh, thing. Uh, so we need the function, which is, I believe, a, it's a factory, in fact, I guess, because it returns something. And it's going to return an edit form. I can't call it form because there's, a, there's a, an object called form in Flutter and it doesn't like the, uh, that I have two objects called form. So we're going to get that edit form or expense form. Yes, call that expense form. 
Uh, and so for now, we don't need anything else. Of course, that doesn't exist. It, yeah, uh, try, you said, try to fix this um, OBS Studio problem, but it requires including Chromium dev binary stuff. Yeah, um, we're working on it. Um, I've, um, I have a few pointers and I ask uh, Martin for help. So we should be able to come around uh, with, uh, with a fix in a near future. Maybe not really near future, but in, in some, some decent amount of time. So back to Flutter, uh, we need a, this form. We need to create this expense form. Okay, so expense form. Let's add an underscore in there because why not? Uh, okay, this form is gonna have, uh, I'm trying to decide if it's gonna be a stateful or a stateless win widget. I don't think it's gonna be a stateless, stateful widget. Could probably be a stateless widget because we're going to create that. In the case where we're going to edit something, we're gonna have some text fields and stuff like that. And I hope we can get the values of those without uh, any change in the model because the model is not going to change that much. And when we create that widget, it's going to be built once so we can pass any information we need. So we're going to go with a stateless widget. So I think it's stateless widget. That's it. And see, that's, that's again how every extension should be done with snippets and, and everything. And I like that. And I'm going to call that expense form. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, all we need. Except we need to control space at the end of this variable so that uh, it's auto imported. Well, you know what? I said I didn't need my uh, earbuds, but I kind of know, kind of need because I'm used to them. And if I don't have them, I'd, there's something missing from my from my stream setup. Uh, begin with a stateless and in, and if in case of you will switch with stateful. Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, how am I, am I supposed to pronounce your, your, uh, your name? If you can type that in chat, uh, uh, kind of a phonetic way to say that. Akdir. Okay. Agdir. Well, thanks for the the uh, advice. Uh, feel free to give more of those. <laughs> right. Uh, so I now have this uh, expense form. So I need to go back in here and include that. And there we go. And it doesn't like that, but probably because I changed something. Let's reload that. Mm, no, it doesn't. What does it say? It's flutter after that failed assertion line uh, no. home equals null. Who? What? Oh, yes. Because when you have routes, you cannot have home. There we go. It is working. And now we need to change the handler for our our there's no H in our here. So on press, we need to call the navigator, I think, and we need to push a named route, right? And what we want to push is the the, 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 the edit route. Okay, and semicolon will help. Let's see if that worked. It is displayed, yes, but because it's written in, uh, you know, it's not written A-K-D-I-R, so I, I was not sure how to pronounce that, so. Okay, let's press the plus button, and that gives us a black window, because 
we pushed the edit route and if we go back to our uh, main dot edit returns an expense form and expense form does nothing it returns a container okay we need to return a scaffold and the scaffold is gonna have an app bar and that's gonna be the app bar and the app bar is going to have a title and this title is going to be edit expense now it's probably not going to be oh hold on I've got the phone call I need to take that uh, how can I do that? I don't know. I'm coming back. Ah, I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to end this stream because my daughter is uh, with a friend of hers and she actually wants to come back home. She's uh, She's got a headache and she wants to come back home. So I'm going to have to stop here. Um, sorry, it's a bit abrupt, but I'm going to do as well. It's been an hour and 20 minutes, so it's, uh, it's kind of a big stream already. I'm going to go back to my uh, main uh, window here. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you, everyone for joining, for subscribing, for following. Uh, this is going to be archived on YouTube um, probably this afternoon or tonight. I'm going to uh, maybe end, change the end of that. Uh, and yes, I'm going to now uh, end this and run and get my daughter to bring her back home. Thank you, everyone. Have a good uh, afternoon and uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.